So, what I do want to teach you is GUI applications, spelt G-U-I. Do you guys know what it stands for? Graphical user interface. Yes, he does. He does know what it stands for. So, what you're going to think to do is what Nicholas said before was Windows 4 applications, which is the obvious one. But we're actually going to go WPF application, which stands for Windows Presentation Foundation. Come in, Chris. Come grab a chair, mate, and join in. So. The difference between the two is Windows Form application is the old way of doing things. WP application, ah, WPF application is the new way of doing things. Okay, so Windows Presentation Foundation. Can you guys remember that? No. Probably not. That's all right. Basically, what you need to know is that WPF applications are a lot more flexible. You can do a lot more things with them. You can... Like, for example, just a simple, simple example, with a Windows Form application, I can put a button on the form. All I can do is resize it and move around. Come in, guys. What I can't do, which I can do in the WPF, is I can actually rotate the button. So it'll be on an angle. That sounds really weird, but it's just an option that you can have. So if I go, this is my form right here in the middle, guys. You right with that? Yeah. Okay. Anything you put on there is going to be in your application. Come in, guys. No, in fact, if I start up the application right now, she'd be nice and bare. But it's a working Windows application, okay? You can move it around, okay? You've got the three buttons up the top you would expect to see. You can even resize it and fully maximize it. So they're the default functions of your application. You don't have to do a thing to get any of those. Make, make good sense? Yeah. Basically, what you can do from this point here is you can start fiddling with it. So if I just single click in the middle there, I could start resizing, I can start doing things with it. But I just want to quickly outline one thing. Can you guys see down the bottom here, it's got all the words and text. Yeah. The text down here and your form up here go hand in hand. And this is actually a really nifty feature that Microsoft have done and I love it. This down here is called XAML. It's Extensible Application Meta Language. All it is, is it looks a bit like HTML if you guys have done a bit of HTML web pages before. And you can actually add objects to your application by typing words instead of having to draw them up the top. So it gives you two options of adding things and working with your forms. Can you see down the bottom there, it's actually highlighted grid. So down here on the left, our grid's a little bit highlighted. It means I've actually selected the grid. So if I was to resize the current object using those little anchor points, I'm resizing what's called a grid. What I do want to resize is the form. So can you see how I've got a little blue outline there at the top? If I click on that, can you see how it's now highlighted window down the bottom? That means if I resize it now, it's resizing the window of the application. So that's how you make your program bigger or smaller, is by resizing the window and not the grid. How do you add things to it? Really bloody easy. On the left, you've got the toolbox there, guys. Okay. Click on that. All WPF controls, grab one, draw it. So if I want a button, I'll click on button and I'll draw a button. Hit play, I have a button, and I can click it. Come on, guys. And that's pretty much it. That's how you start doing a GUI application. Pretty straightforward, guys? Yeah? Pretty good. You'll also notice down here, guys, inside the grid, it's actually just put a button object. It's given it a couple of properties. And it's actually set up things like, you know, its width, its height, and stuff like that. So if you didn't want to have to draw a button, you can actually type it in. So I could go button. Um, yeah, I'm just going to leave it like that. One big ass button. Why? Because I can. Just as an example. Okay, and I can move it around. You can see the properties down the bottom are changing, can't you? But yeah, so that is a WPF application. Okay? You have to get away from consoles now, guys, if you want to do this kind of stuff. So in consoles, we're thinking about inputs and outputs, aren't we? Okay. So if I want to write something to the screen, what do I generally use? Console. Yep, console commands like write line. Um, if I want to get something from the user, what do we generally use? Read lines and read key, things like that. They're not available to us anymore. You can't go Windows form dot read line, that doesn't make sense. Okay. How are we going to get user input now that we've got we haven't got any more console. We can't type commands or stuff in. That's right. You have to think about the controls that you've got at your disposal now. So you've got all these ones to choose from, guys. Even more, in fact. Um, you can add more than what's here. But, for example, 
There's a text box. If I was to grab a text box and jam him on the form. Works like a text box. By default. No configuration needed at all. Okay, other things that we can use to get user input. Radio buttons, guys. You ever used those before? No? You serious? I don't mean have you ever used them like in programming sense. Have you used them as in like a user sense? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, why is that... Go away then. I think I pasted a radio button with him itself. Just to make things nice and confusing. So there's another way that we can get user input. Those are the kind of radio buttons that you can use. Okay, fun fact, do you know why it's called a radio button? What's a radio? Things that play music. An old school radio had big fat buttons on the top. And you'd push one of the buttons in to play like, like a cassette player, I should be saying. But you press the play button, the play button would stay in. If you press the stop button, what would happen to the play button? It would pop out. So that's why it's called a radio button, because when you select the second one, the first one pops out. There you go, fun fact for you. Not that much to do about GUI programs, but there it is. Other ones, checkbox. Tell me you've used the bloody checkbox. Yeah. Don't shake your head, Matt. <laughs> you've used a checkbox. Okay, and other ones like, I should have a combo box there. So you've got drop down lists, you've got heaps of stuff. So you need to now think, how am I going to get data from the user? And these are the ways you're going to get data through text boxes, radio buttons, check boxes, drop down box, and things like that. There's heaps more options, okay, that you can get data from, okay? But that's some of the options. What are some of the ways we can communicate with the user, though, guys? How can we get information to them in a form? Hmm. What might be some of the things we can use there? Text block. Text block. Mm, text block. Okay, it's a way of you putting text on the screen. Okay? So I could say, hello, user. I don't know. This is something special. Okay? What's the old saying about pictures? It's bigger than a thousand words. You can now use pictures. You don't have to use text all the time now, guys. And Windows. WPF application use as many pictures, icons as you possibly can from now on. Okay? Because they do, they speak a thousand words. Okay? How do you feel about all that, guys? So that's the main difference between a, a console program and a GUI application. Alright? Feeling okay about it? Yeah. Alright? So you just gotta think about how you're gonna communicate with your user. Now, some of these things look a bit boring, don't they? Nice and white, small text, they all sort of look the same. How do we change things like that? use the properties manager. Now, I haven't spent a whole lot of time with this properties manager. There's a crap load of things that you can change about it, okay? You can see appearances there, okay? So you can change how see-through it is, you can change if it's visible or not, border thicknesses, different effects. Brushes are probably the one you want to see. There's background colors that you can set. And you do it by clicking on the property and then just changing the color down here. Pretty straightforward. You can even use gradients if you guys are up for using gradients. Pretty ugly. Can't see Oh, is that better? My epic white to red text box. To be honest, it's the first time I've ever used a gradient in the text box. It looks so bad. This is a WPF application. Yeah. Okay. Um, text. Let's see if I can. Oh, just. There you go. You happy? No. Kyle's not even paying attention, I don't what? think. It's beautiful. Bit of Comic Sans for you, mate. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, that's just how you're going to change the appearance and a couple of other things about the thing. Now, have I shown you code yet? Yeah, that's not the code for programming though. That's the interface code. I don't want to talk about that too much, but um, it's under Solution Explorer. Okay, if you guys look here, do you see anything that says Module 1? No, it would be um, application. It's actually under main window is what you see here, isn't it guys? That's my first form that I have, all right? Every form has a module behind it. Come in, Will, hurry up. It's all good, mate. So this here, main window, is the visual part of it. If I actually press that next to it, can you guys see how it's got a .vb there? There's my code. 
Look pretty familiar? Yeah, by default it will. You could accidentally close it though, and you'll need to access it through that way. Or there's heaps of ways you can get to the code section, guys. You can right click on it and say view code. What's the shortcut? Can you see there? F7. So if you remember the F7 button, it's just going to take you straight to the code. Okay? And there's my wonderful program. Now, what you need to get your head around with these kind of programs, guys, when we're doing console programs, who was in control? Was it the user or the programmer? Who decided what to do when? It was the programmer. You guys are in control at the moment with console programming. You need to now let go of that control, guys. Let go of the power. It is now time for the user to take control. The user is going to decide when things happen, how many times they happen, and what's going to happen. Okay, does that make some sense? Okay, I've got my big form here. I've got radio buttons, check boxes, and text boxes. Can I dictate to the user what they have to choose first? No. Not really. I can suggest, but they have every choice in the world to choose any one of those things first. Okay? So what we're actually going to do is we're going to be responding to the user's actions as a programmer now, instead of the other way around. Does that make some sense so far in that way? So, all right. Get rid of all those. Let me just quickly add a button. I did that by double clicking, by the way, guys. Notice how I can rotate. Don't ask me why, but you can, <laughs> you can rotate. All right. There's a button. What can you do with buttons? Okay. That didn't work the way I wanted it to. It's still not working the way I wanted it to. <laughs> all right. What you now need to think of, code in console programs was all in subs, wasn't it? Code in form programs is now in events. We are responding to events from now on. Events can be a lot of things. Can you guys see in the properties panel here, I've got a spanner and then I've got a lightning bolt. The lightning bolt are your events for that object. Every single one of these things here, we can have code responding to it. So can you guys see at the top there it says click? So if I put code underneath the click event, it's going to happen when they click on the button. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just here. Okay. If I scroll down, there's heaps more of them. Um, something that's probably obvious for you guys. Mouse down. It's when I click on it with a mouse key. There's mouse enter when the mouse cursor goes over the top of it. So you can actually have code that responds to all the actions of the mice, all the actions of the keyboard, whatever you want. It's almost exactly like that. It's like an, uh, it's like an event and then an action after it. So the way I actually do this, guys, is I'll, if I want to respond to a click, you'll double click in the text box next to it. And this is where your code goes. Sound good? Okay, so what do I want to do when they click on the button? Um, I'll do a message box, because it's nice and easy. Message box dot show. Hello world. Okay, if I hit F5, I run my program, hit the button. The great thing about event-driven code is it can happen more than once. No loops, there's no calling subs extra, it's just the user clicking on that button multiple times. All right. In this code, you can literally do whatever you want. You can change the background of the form. You can change, I don't know, what's in a text box. You can open up another form. You can do whatever you want to do, really. So let's say, for example, uh, let's go Now, I'll tell you what me is in just a second. Now, what is background? Is it a color? Media brush. Do, 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 do. Look how many colors you got this time in round two, guys. Wait. I have no idea. Yes. <laughs> that's just one thing you can do. I can change the background to wheat. So that's pretty much it, guys. Does that make sense? Me refers to the form. Okay? So that's just the way you write it. Now, I'm going to be a complete arsehole. Have you guys ever played those games where you try to catch the button? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to do that right now. So, mouse enter is when the mouse goes over the top of the button. So as soon as the mouse cursor touches this button, it's gonna, the code's going to go off. It's going to affect it. All right, let's go. Button. Oh, crap. Ooh, I can't do it. The reason I can't do it, guys, that's actually not my button on my form. I haven't named my button yet. If you want to program with it, you have to name it. 
No, even easier. In the properties, at the top, it says no name. I'm going to call him B-E-T-N for button, find me. Okay. So now if I go B-T-N, there he is, find me. Okay, now have they got left? Oh my god, I can't remember. Alright. This is going to be really awkward. <laughs> Alright, let's just do this as an example. Yeah. Okay. That might look really weird, but what I'm setting there is the left, so how, like the X position, the Y position, the width and the height of the button, guys. Alright. So, what I want to do is randomize these two numbers. So let's be an R, so let's dim rand as a new random. This is exactly what we did in console programming, notice. Rand hasn't changed <laughs> at all. Um, zero, then we go me dot width. And let's do dot height. And we might call it after this, guys, if you want to try it out yourselves. Me, me, me. Oh, he's gone. Me, me, me. Yeah. There you go. There's my dumb program for you guys. An example of how to do a GUI. Yes. Well, for some people, yes, it is. Now I'm trying to make some more. That's right. If you could change the background color, you you've got it. But yeah, that's pretty much it for an introduction to GUI um, programs, guys. But next week, what we'll do is we'll extend on this and we'll actually make ourselves a calculator. Do something a little bit more productive. Yeah, so right. to make that but yeah, have a play around on it yourself if you really want, guys. But that's pretty much it for this lesson. That's good.